All right, guys, now we're going to move on. We're going to create our own format dialog here. Um, there is a feature you could use where you could open up a uh, normal Windows format dialog like you have in the traditional notepad, but I figured while we're making our own application, why not make our own format dialog just for the fun of it. So this is where we're going to go to our main project here. I'm going to right click, add new item, find the window WPF, and we'll call this our font dialog or format dialog, whichever you prefer really. Um, and in here is where we're going to create everything so we can have a functioning uh, format dialog to change the format of our editor. We're first going to create a Windows resources. So uh, do a window dot resources. Now remember this is outside of your grid. This is not part of your window content. And in here, we're going to um, essentially have the values. Uh, we're going to, for example, font family, um, font sizes, uh, font styles, all of that we can establish in our XAML so we don't have to create a list in our actual view models holding these values. So we can set them all by default right here in our Windows resources. So that's why first we're going to create an object data provider and we're going to give it a key and we'll call it um, font family options and then we're going to set an object type and we'll use the brackets here the X namespace and we'll use type and we're going to actually need our fonts which I have not created the namespace so we're going to do I'll leave that empty for now. We first need to create a namespace so we can access the collection of the font family. So we'll do XML and S and we'll call this media equals CLR namespace. And this is where we're going to do a system dot windows dot media. And then we're going to do assembly equals presentation core okay I have it written down so presentation core so now we have our media and I'm actually going to copy and paste uh, these namespaces I've already taken note of that we're going to use so we're also going to have a win namespace and a sys namespace um, so you can copy these values here and create those namespaces and we can now move forward and we will go to our media and fonts there we go our media and our fonts and we're going to do method name get system and I got all this um, I got uh, some of this from Stack Overflow. So don't feel like, oh my God, I don't know, like, you know, <laughs> you're doing all these things I don't know. Oh, like, you know, feeling like you're so far behind. No, like a lot of it you do got to get off the internet. Like I, you shouldn't be expected to uh, memorize uh, where all these things are. So that is okay. Um, so basically though, what we're doing here is we're assigning a object data provider. Uh, we're giving this key because we're going to reference it later. Uh, it's an object type, so we're setting the type to, of course, it's going to be a type of font family. And then we're using, we're calling a method to get system font families. Okay, so don't don't be too worried if you're not understanding all this. You know, a lot of the times you do got to go on the internet and figure things out. Um, we're also going to create uh, a custom array of doubles because we could also, we could put the, the list of font sizes that are available. We could put those into our view models if we uh, decided or in our format models, but we'll keep it simple and we'll simply uh, put the array here. So we're going to do our X namespace and we're going to call array. And of course we got to give it a key and we'll call it font size options. And then we're going to again um, do a type 
and this is where we're going to go to sys. Now remember, sys is a namespace we created above. So we're going to do sys double. So this means it's going to be of, of course, a type double. And we'll open up the brackets there. And I'm going to copy and paste here for the sake of time. And we'll paste this here. So essentially we're doing a sys type uh, of double. And then we're going to do our brackets of a sys double we'll enter in the double value we want. So these will all be, we'll do only a few, uh, these will all be available sizes for our font dialog. You can add more if you'd like, um, but I'm going to keep it simple for that. And then we're also going to do another X array, and we're going to call this X key, and we're going to do font weight options. Okay, and then we're going to call type again, and this is where we're going to go to the win namespace we just created above, and we're going to do font weight. And again, we're going to now create, and I'll copy and paste again, So I'd like to make things pretty speedy. Uh, then we're going to then use our win namespace, uh, font weight, Okay, and this will be the value. So we're supplying the value of type font weight, which these are valid values. Okay, and now we're going to do one last array, so x array, and we'll give it an x key of, uh, what is it, font style, font style options, we can call this, and we'll do type again, and we'll go back to our win namespace and we'll say font style and I will copy and paste these as well because so we got a lot to do um, so you can pause and copy these as well which is our normal italic oblique so these so essentially now we have a collection that we can reference in our XAML because we're going to have some list boxes and combo boxes to determine uh, what our editor should have as its format. So now we're going to create our actual window. So we're going to go to our grid and we want to split it up into about four because we have about four different collections. So we're going to do a grid a grid dot row definitions and if you're not familiar with grids I have a video on that as well and we're going to call a row definition and we're going to have two of these. Now we're going to have a list box and some combo boxes. The combo boxes are going to be on the bottom, so we're going to give these a height of auto. Therefore, our list boxes can take up the remaining space. Then we're also going to go to grid column definitions, and we're going to create some column definitions. We're going to create two. So we want to break it up into four pieces. So we have a two by two grid here. And now we can move on to making some fun stuff. So we're now going to create a doc panel. And the doc panel is going to be a grid row zero, grid column zero. So it's going to be in the top left corner here. And we're going to create a text block. And we're going to, mm, yeah, we'll dock it to the top. So we'll dock it to the top and we will call this font family. And then we are going to have a list box under it. So then we're going to do a list box. Whoops, gotta open up. List box and item source. So now this is where we're going to be accessing our collections here and we're going to be calling a binding source. So we're going to connect to our source which is a static resource and this is where we have all of our options so we will do font family options which is what we created above. So that will be the item source of this list box. We are then going to do selected item. So whatever item is selected. Uh, will be binding to our family, okay, so our family property. And then we'll do 
uh, selected index by default will be zero. And we'll do this for now. Okay, so now we have a list box that is bound to our collections. And as we see, it gets displayed for us right here. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, how did you, uh, how did you bind to family? Because as far as we can tell, uh, we don't even have a data context here. So how is that possible? And the fact of the matter is, is we actually need to address that right now. And that's if we go back to our view models here and we go to uh, what it, we did it in our file. Was it in our file? Nope. Was it in our editor? Yes. So we have our format command. Remember, this is where we have our not implemented exception. So we didn't forget about this, or at least I didn't forget about this just yet. So this is where we're going to open up our new font dialog. So we're going to say var font dialog equals a new font dialog window. And we're going to make sure we set its data context, okay? The data context is going to be equal to our format model here. So we want to make sure we bind that here because we want it to, we can't do it like we did before because we want it to have this instance of a format model because that is what our editor is based on. So we want to make sure we bind it to that. And then we also want to do a font dialog dot show dialog. So it will pop up once this command executes. So now we can jump back and our binding should be valid. Now, it's cool, we have a list of them, but sometimes you actually wanna be able to see what it looks like. Um, so this is where we're actually going to access our list box, and we're going to hit dot, and we're going to do item template. This is where we can modify the item template of each and every uh, item in this collection. And we will do a data template, because it must be a data template, because this template is for uh, a piece of data, which is uh, an item in the collection. So based on that, we're going to then do a text block. The text value, so what it says, whoops, yep, text, what it says is we're just going to simply say binding. Binding means it's just simply going to bind to the value um, of this font family, which will be its name. But we also want to change the font family of this text block, and we're going to say binding here as well. So when we do text binding, and we're binding to the font family, uh, it's going to call the, the, uh, the to string for the text. So we can simply just bind it to the actual fam, uh, font family, and we'll get the string value of it. And then we're going to do the font family binding because we want the font family to be the family of what it is representing. So as we see here, we have all of the options displayed for us. So that's it really for our font family portion. Now we're going to move on to creating another doc panel for our font size options. So we're going to create, let me scroll down. Going to now create a doc panel, and this will be a grid row zero because we still want it to the top, but we want to change the grid column to one. We want it to be to the right. Excuse my hiccups here. And now we have a text block uh, like above. We want to dock this to the top because it's going to be essentially a title for this option, and we'll call this font size. So this will be the font size of, uh, below will be the font sizes that you can select. And then we're going to do another list box, item source, like we did above. And we're going to do exactly what we did. And we're going to bind to a source, which is a static resource we created, which is font size options. Then after item sources, we're going to also do the same of selected, item, selected item, and binding. We're going to bind this to the size. So whatever the size of its data context, because remember, the data context is the format model. So now we are binding to the size property. And selected index, by default, we will make 
zero. So there we have our font sizes and we don't need to really do any item templates for this, but notice it's kind of empty. Uh, so like I said, you can add in more sizes if you would like. Moving on, we're now going to have our font weight and style options. So we're going to now create um, a stack panel and we're going to also change this to uh, grid column zero grid row one. So now we want it to be in the bottom left. Let me zoom this out a little. So now we want this to be in the bottom left. And we'll create a text block here. Uh, we'll call this font styles and we'll create a combo box now. Combo box item source so essentially guys, we're just repeating steps here. That's all we're really doing. Repeating steps and you're gonna be doing a lot of that. So we're gonna do static resource. This is what, font styles. So now we want our font styles options collection. And of course we want our selected, I keep saying selected, selected <laughs> item. And we're going to be binding. The, so whenever the selected item changes, uh, it is going to be bound to the style property that we have and of course selected index by default we want to be zero and thankfully we can actually just copy paste uh, what we're doing here so we're going to copy paste and this will be in column one row one font styles we're going to be doing font weight change it to font weight options and we're going to be obviously binding this to the weight. So now we essentially have our font dialog here. Thank God. I don't mean to have you guys uh, feel like I don't enjoy this. It is really fun. I'm not a big fan of XAML. Why? Not because I don't like XAML, but because I'm not really good at designing. Uh, that's not what I do. So it's just, I don't know, it's just depressing looking at how ugly some things are. But who the hell really cares because we're actually learning a lot and we're having fun, right? <laughs> so uh, really that's it for the font dialog here. I suppose I could change, just add a space in here so it actually looks pretty nice. Um, let's try and run our application and see if we're forgetting anything. So we'll type in hello world and we'll go to our format. We'll hit format and now it opens because of our command and we have our font sizes which are bound to our format op or format properties. So as we click them, they will also change. And as our font families change, these will change as well. Here are the fire trucks in the background, hopefully, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so here we go, guys. This is uh, fun. We have our font styles now, italic, and we can make them bold, all that fun stuff. So now we have a functioning font dialog box. Yeah, 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 stupid fire trucks. Strap your seatbelt in. We just got one little thing to finish, and we have a complete application.